Right, Paul, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us what you do and all the rest of it. <sighs> Where do we start? Mate, um, business owner, business mentor, business coach. Uh, I'd say my expertise in marketing, sales, leadership, building businesses from ground up, even helping businesses who are you know, doing seven figures and scaling and getting them to where they want to be and just uh, all around fucking nice guy, mate. Do you know okay, what you found right. man? All right. Just, um, just being there and doing me and just living the fucking day-to-day -day life that we're, that we're trying to you know, play this game. Right, okay. So I wanted to get you on because I know you're quite a passionate person. Do you know what I mean, right? And I think it all stemmed from somewhere. Am I right? Didn't you have some like sort of loss that kind of triggered it, that, that, that created this monster, so to speak? Like, <sighs> where so did it all start? Yeah, so, so going all the way back, I mean, I'm, I'm 35 this year. Mm -hmm. um, so if we, if we strip it all the way back, so I'm originally from Bradford. Mm -hmm. So I went to an old boys school. So from a young age, I played football, that was my thing. I think every... Every lad wants to be a footballer, don't they? Mm -hmm. But I played at a decent level. I played at Uddersfield Town Academy. Uh, I played at Bradford Boys. Um, played at Yorkshire. And I, started, I played with Fabian Delph at the time. He were in about the same age as me. He obviously went on to play at Man City in England. Long story short, there's no short story. I said, I didn't make it because I wasn't good enough. I just didn't want, fucking want it bad enough, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of, when I lost that, when I lost that, I think that was my moment to think I was going to make it as a footballer at a young age. And I had a moment where I got a letter from Huddersfield Town saying they're, they're, they're going to disregard me because of my attitude. My attitude was totally wrong. And I remember that's the key moment in my life, at probably age of about 12, 13, where I got rejected, where it sparked something inside me. I think, I will never fucking feel like that again yeah, in anything I did. It bad was, feeling. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I only realised that at an older age. And um, so from the age of 30, when I went to an old boys' school, it's, it's very much egotistical. Lads are fighting every, every lunchtime, dinner time. And you're putting on this persona, trying to be someone and act up. And um, I kind of got caught up in that bullshit where I were in the wrong circles, doing the wrong things with the wrong people. Um, and it wasn't until 16, 17 that I looked around and thought, what the fuck am I doing here? Mm. So, I mean, I'm doing naught with my life. I'm mm -hmm. literally just bumming about, um, living with mum and dad. And I know I'm still young at the time, 16, 17, but I'm seeing everyone else has kind of got an idea of kind of, you know, who they are as, as, a, as a person and whatever they're doing. But all I found is I was always passionate, always trying to make some money. Mm -hmm. I'd play coins he's throwing a fucking pound coin at a wall at dinner time or 50 mm -hmm. pences and mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and, and yeah, just had that entrepreneur yeah mindset. yeah just trying to make some trying to make yeah. some coin and then when I um when I left school I didn't do the best there came out with three GCSEs in the end it was literally PE English and maths that's all I cared about everything else I want bad but I just want I want I knew there was there were more I felt like from a young age they call it walk don't they these days I felt like at a young age I'm already walking to what I'm being taught by teachers is not something that I'm really going to apply in the real world. Mm -hmm. So when it came to actually leaving school, um, I actually left and I went straight to work at, uh, at Matalan. So I worked at Matalan in Bradford just to get just to get a job working. I mm. fucking hated it. Really? Like it was just picking up all the sales clothes from men's and women's and doing the shit. But what triggered the moment in understanding I was a leader and somehow I wanted to get involved in business is seeing the managers that were there, that at the time they were getting probably paid about 25k, which was a lot of money back then. I'm looking at 17, 18, thinking, how oh, can I get 25 grand in my bank? Mm. Um, and I'm watching these managers do fucking shitty jobs. So I walked in the office one time and said to them, I said, you know, I see that in, in the back room, in the warehouse, there's someone running that day today and it's not running properly. I said, give me a chance to do it. And I was on him, on him, on him. And they give me a chance for a warehouse. And I ran that warehouse on a weekend. And I blagged my way in and I had it running like, you know, clockwork. clockwork. Really? Yeah, at 17, 18, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I've got something here. Mm -hmm. And then, I, then long story short, I applied for this job to become a team leader in a warehouse. Blagged it. They said, I think you've gone for the wrong job. You're supposed to be it's for picker packers, this job. And I said, no, no, I'm going for a team leader. What's your expertise? And I fucking bullshit on my CV. Saying <laughs> like I ran this old, this yeah. Battlelands warehouse or whatnot. Blagged it, got in there, and when I were in the room, I ensured that I just, you know, I were in that room for a purpose, got the job, learned from the back of that. And it just all stemmed from there, and then that led me down a different track than I'm going in the music industry and actually leaving business behind and, and going down a different route. Wow. So, really, the rejection kind of stemmed it a little bit, and then practicing the real world and seeing that there was some shocking managers out there, and you thought, you know what, I'd do a better job. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like I said, I think it's anything in it. I think when you're. It's, it's knowing and understanding who you are as an individual and kind of what you want out of life. You know, I always say, this is just this is just all a game, is this? Like, mm -hmm. it don't fucking really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying now, and even 100, 200, 300 years from now, whatever I'm doing in business, I, it don't matter how much money I've made, it's never really going to matter, is it? Mm -hmm. So I think, while I am here, what can I do that's going to ensure that I'm showing my own self that this is my own passion in what mm -hmm. I love to do, but also I've got a why behind why I'm doing it. And my mm -hmm. why, I guess, is probably from an ego point of view, is just trying to prove to myself that... 
I can, you know, do better than, than what I imagined I could do before and I won't ever get someone to say no to me again. And if they do say no, then I'll look at that and understand, well, why is it someone's giving me a rejection to then show you it was wrong to reject me in the first place? I think it comes from a place of kind of ego, I guess my dad as well at the same time from what he's achieved in his life before and, and just being able to say, you know, putting the Donnelly name out there and saying I did better than my dad and mm -hmm. it all stems from that, you know, there's so many different things that you can pull, pull from but yeah, I guess it's rejection and, and not wanting to be. It sounds like you've had a lot of success and it's kind of spiralled. Have you had any, not rejection, but have you had any failures? Have you ever jumped into one business and absolutely fucked up? Major? Yeah, 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 big time. I mean, like I said, when I when I left the whole team leader stuff, people don't know this about me, I'll probably come out a lot now, now I'm doing more of these podcasts. Is, mm -hmm. So my, my background is working in the music industry, so mm -hmm. I, I was a singer-songwriter. So right. I, I had a song with Faze from Endubs as a recording artist. Right. Um, released songs, did um, gigs at Capital FM, Kiss FM, all these things. And how that started is from when I was 17, 18, I had a passion in singing. Started going down the route of working in the music industry. One thing led to another. And I had a lot of rejection in that industry. Mm -hmm. So it all started to come back to me again where I had no fucking money. Like literally, I was living at home, bumming about, but I was on a night time on the laptop reaching out to people trying to make some at work paying a pound on the mega bus to go to london to mm -hmm. meet people in the industry mm -hmm. and that went on for many years until i got my breakthrough um but i had a lot of rejection a hell of a lot of rejection that you know throughout that process that probably built a character of who i am today because that music industry is tough mm -hmm. you know we're working with universal music sony music warner music with producers and songwriters and artists um is there good money in that by the way like, yeah, yeah, the, is the good money like so yeah, do you know absolutely. if you, if yeah, you yeah. do a but, song do you get royalties I don't know yes yeah, so look here's, here's the story behind it so obviously you've, you've got to in, in any business in any industry you'll know yourself is that when the tax man's knocking mm -hmm. you want to get rid of so much money mm -hmm. right and in the music industry they have this big pool of money at the start of the year that they need to spend on artists that they feel like they're going to get a return from mm -hmm. it's a business mm -hmm. now there's other certain artists i.e. like me when they've got cash on the side they think oh it's worth a punt mm. we'll try it on this individual mm -hmm. got a good boy he's actually doing quite well he's been a fan base let's give it a go so when i signed my i signed a record deal with universal music in 2016 um, and i signed that alongside a business partner of mine where we actually got distribution through these as well at the same time but before that in 2014 i signed my own publishing deal now at that stage before I broke into the industry to make money, it was tough to make money in there because I wasn't in the bigger circles. I wasn't with Universal. I was just me, mm -hmm. myself, had a voice, could write a song, try to break through. A £10 in my fucking bank, I remember at the time I slept under the bridge of um, Clapham Common. I was in a studio of a guy called Simon and I got the £1 mega bus down there and a £10 in my name and I thought, is it really a quid to get the bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pound mega bus. Yeah, down in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, um, that's the most shocking thing so far. Travelled that travel down there, and, and in that moment, that day, that's the day that I worked in the studio, and then I had a meeting with Wardlaw Music, and I signed a publishing deal with them. I had a song written called Dirty Bass, and that did really well for an artist who won German Idol, which is like X Factor, um, in Germany called Luca Hanni. So and you he, wrote that song. Yeah, and I wrote you that sold song. That song yeah, yeah. So right, okay. you write the song, and then I got royalties from that. Still get royalties today from it. Wow. He released it in Germany, Austria, uh, Switzerland. It did really well, and that put my name on that platform for other publishers and record labels to think, "Who's this songwriter?" But then they realised I was actually an artist as well, and then that's when it broke into the scene of working at Universal. So long story short, Universal give you a give you an advance. But this is the industry and the music industry is you look at that money and you think it's your money mm -hmm. and it's not right it has to be spent on travel expenses mm -hmm. music video the artist clothing everything so we're talking big money for a song what was it back in the day you get 20 grand so, for a song or something what? it depends it's, like i said like you know big big major artists are going to get million pound record deals and that's going to cover everything for an album or a song yeah it depends it depends what kind of deal you do so you could do a 360 deal so for example a 360 deal might be they have rights on your songs rights on your gigs rights on your merchandise and they take percentages from everything wow. you might just get a you know a single deal where you do one single release so what we had was a single and distribution deal with universal which means i was clever enough from having all that rejection in looking into the business side of it and thinking well i want to own my rights to my songs mm -hmm. if you don't own your rights to your songs and you sell all that over to the label that's where they recoup make the money and you just make money from gigs Get so you left with the call mm -hmm. so i signed a deal which were a good deal um probably around i mean at the time then it probably about 65 70k plus for free mm -hmm. singles um and you think that's a lot of money but it's not in the grand scheme of things um but it was good i, I loved it i did the free single deals i had songs playing kiss fm by mike delinquent um, um majestic and then that led on to phase from end doing the uh, second single with me do you still um, sing 
Can you still sing? I, I, I can still sing. I'm going to sing right what now. What type of singing are you on about? So we do. So again, you could Google it. I would call Thomas Diego on the, uh, and it'll all come out on this anyway. So you could Google it, Thomas Diego. It's still there on YouTube. Still, you can see the gigs and everything. Oh, so you actually called yourself a stage like you yeah, yeah, name? Yeah, 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 really? yeah. Really? Yeah. But wow. I had to do that because there was a songwriter called Paul Donnelly previously who run uh, a different publishing label, and it just sense. a bit of confusion. But yeah. it, it, it helped anyway because it helped with the branding. Brilliant. So I'll call Thomas Diego. It's all online. You can Google it. T E A G O. Um, and the gigs are on there, the songs are on there. So it was kind of like I was going down the route of it was pop, i.e., I. popular music, mm -hmm. but R and B. So mm -hmm. it had like a, it was during the time when all those kind of like you know Craig um, David. It, it, it's a mix <laughs> of garage, gone? mix of garage, but it was like uh, how could I how could I put it? it was like uh, I'd like those island kind of like you know I'd say not reggae but island beats behind it, which were cool. kind of cool back then. So, right. so you it, did a couple well. of songs and then you thought. Right, this is too hard now. I'm off. This is, no, this is no, not where the money's I, I'm at. Gonna stay, no, I'm going to stay in the industry. So I did well, like I said, I did well in the industry, but mm -hmm. the business side of it intrigued me. And I just realised from an artist's point of view, I'm, I, was 20, I was probably 25, 26 then, mm -hmm. and I'm doing these gigs, and you can see it online, there's 14, 15, 16 year old girls screaming, grabbing mm -hmm. me, and I thought, this is just weird, right? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And the label will say, but that's your market, mm. that's who will buy your songs. I get that. But for me, again, I had to look at myself and think, but I, I don't feel like it's me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm putting yeah. on a false pretense to what? Fucking if it were catch loaded, a coin. It, I'm going to say, if it were a load of 20-year-olds, you might be all right. Were you single at the time, or do you have a missus? Um, I had a missus at the time, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So you so, couldn't even, if there was any good vagina, you couldn't even jump in anyway. <laughs> exactly. Jesus, yeah. devastating. Exactly. And it, it's, so it got to the point where I was just like, ah, it's not for me, and I had to consider that. And I, I had to step away and say, I don't want to do this kind of music no more. I want to go more into house, garage, and go down that route. But they weren't interested in it. Mm -hmm. They were tied to a contract. Um, and so I was going to stay in the industry and I was going to continue working on the business side of it, doing A&R, which mm -hmm. is basically new artists coming in, they send you records, I listen to them, are they good enough, sign them and help to build their careers and, and build theirs because they're good connections in the industry. But what hit me is my dad got a brain infection in the end of 2017. So he was really ill. So he just, out of nowhere, just got a brain infection, really ill. Just a basic infection, not like cancerous? Still not... To, yeah, still to today, I don't know what it's called. It was called wow. um, um, something like epithemia infuria or something. And it's basically pus on the brain, but it just happened. Even to today, they don't have a fucking clue how that happened. Wow. But everything's for a reason, right? And in that time, I were in a space where we're kind of trying to find, don't want to do the business route with Universal, mm -hmm. don't carry on being a song. Yeah, you were questioning like things. Yeah, and money wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm because of the fact of that, that, you know, I didn't really understand where were my lane, what were I going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I got the brain infection, I just fucking packed everything up. I mean, you could pay me millions, mate, right? And it doesn't matter. Family to me is fucking life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I packed everything up, came back up north from, from being down south, looked after my dad, and we're in hospital for a good six, seven months. I'm, I'm talking feeding him, I couldn't even lift his hand. I'm talking washing him, cleaning him. Was your mum there as well? or is your She mom was there, but right, my okay. mom, my, to be fair to my mum, mum's always been strong, but... At that point, she kind of saw... My dad's always been the strong man and being the guy, mm. do you know what I mean? He's been the main Donnelly, the king, mm -hmm. right? And uh, to see him how he was in his state of not mm. even just... He just he shook everyone up. Mm. So I was holding it in and hiding it away from my family. Mm -hmm. So my mum would be crying, my sisters would be crying. And I'm the youngest, and I'd only do that behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. I was pushing everyone away. I told my missus to fuck off, I'm still mm -hmm. with now. I've got kids with telling her to leave me alone, pushing all my friends away, fuck off, fuck off, didn't want to know. Um, and it wasn't until my missus grabbed me, shook me, because I felt like depression. I was drinking bottles of whiskey while my dad's still in hospital at Pinderfields in Wakefield. And I'm still getting up every morning. If it's seven o'clock and it opens, I'm there. If it fucking closes at eight, I leave at eight or So you weren't actually working. You were literally just looking didn't after Didn't work, mate. Stayed, wow. stayed at home. Didn't work. Didn't take any money. Oh, um, that you say seven, seven months? A good six, seven months. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm in, a bad, I'm in a bad, bad place. And it's like a lost kind of who I was. Mm. And um, everyone's saying to me, you know, you need to get a job. You need to get back out down in London, get working, etc. I'm like, no, fuck that. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? My dad's, mm -hmm. my dad's my rock, so... Uh, yeah, I just close to me Yeah, we just, I just, any money I had, mm -hmm. I saved it to spend it to get down, my dad, look after him, you know, and do everything that I could to, to be able to help him and get him back up to speed. And mm -hmm. Touchwood now, he's good. He, um, you know, many people, when they see him, they wouldn't even imagine that he's had these issues, you know. Um, he came out of the other side, and they think, they always said, like, to him, it's a miracle, they don't understand how it happened. But that really set me up then, probably what we'll talk about in a moment, where, what we're doing today with business owners. Is it at that moment when I saw my dad in his fucking deathbed where they, where they put him in a room saying he's critically ill, I don't mm. know if he's going to make it through, where that again sparked something inside me to think, that can't happen. Mm. Like, surely you can't just get someone, some some man, and just cut him off and say, right, it's all for them to decide. Like, it just can't happen. Mm. And I'll question it for you, it just can't be. And I'm As thinking, in you saying whoever was looking after him, that's 
that's absolutely inexcusable. Yeah, I just yeah, think, yeah, I think you. everyone looks at You are all shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just think, I Where's just think, the decent surgeons? Yeah, yeah, and I just think, I think, just everything, I'll question everything, like, you know, and I'm not telling them how to do the job, but mm. you question these things, mm. and then you question everything about life, and thinking, well, what's it all fucking about? My dad's dying. Like, I've, I fucking had all this good music career, but now I've walked away and fucked everything up now, and where am I at? I feel Who like am I? Do what need, am I doing? You, there's always some sort of domino effect. I feel like you've got to have something big happen to you to kind of spark some fire in you. Do you know 100%. what I mean? Does that make sense? Absolutely. And that was obviously your major catalyst. Yeah. Every trigger, I mean? every trigger is a domino effect, isn't it? You trigger something and mm -hmm. then it just sends off a load of action and events. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and it's like anything in business or life, it's what you do and decide what you do with those kind of actions, mm -hmm. what those events have occurred. Mm -hmm. And that's where people can either go wrong or they can go right. Well, for the time he was ill, you were using it in the wrong way, weren't you? You were, you were hitting the bottle, doing all the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. then it takes going that and getting into a low place to actually go shit yeah i need to sort my shit out 100 percent. and it was the missus who did that so she she shook me fucking told me because i was telling her to leave me alone mm -hmm. and she said this ain't you she mm -hmm. went oh mm -hmm. fucking done this she went look at what mm -hmm. you've achieved look at the people mm -hmm. around you look what you've done mm -hmm. fucking get yourself together yeah would your dad want you to be sad would he fuck yeah exactly you know what I mean? and that's when i just decided you're right and i was still looking after the time and i wrapped everything up um and just started helping out people with, with different type of businesses, like my missus' uncle, um, God rest his soul, he's passed away now, but he he would he had a big company, a multi-million company, where they were doing, like, gifts. Um, you know, we're talking things from printing stuff on, like, you know, cushions and, you know, uh, beer mats, whatever it may be, and signs and stuff, and they were a big company. But he needed help with digital marketing and how to get that up, and that kind of gave me the passion again, the spark to help him. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with him in meetings during, you know, a way time away from my dad, if I were out of hospital, helping him to grow and showing him what he should do with his business. And that led on to me meeting other people who worked at Kodak Cameras, who were like high up there because he introduced me to them. And it kind of gave me that fire back again because they mm -hmm. were saying, You've got a fucking good business acumen, you know what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know how to position a business, how to sell, you know how to market. You know, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and there were opportunities there that were laid at me, but I just wanted that head space and the time to do it. But because of that very moment, the conversation of people telling me how good I was, who were high at that level, even though looking after my dad, I thought, there's something I reckon I could do could do here. Mm -hmm. There's something I could probably get my teeth into up north mm -hmm. to allow me to then, you know, trigger onto the next part of my story of where I want to go, where I want to be. Am I right in thinking you helped is it um Sullivan, uh the physiotherapist? Yeah, is that David right? Sullivan, yeah, 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 yeah. great guy. Great so guy. go on, you you did you actually just go in there or did you actually work for him? Yeah, so it's a good, good, good yeah, it's good so if, if anyone doesn't know Dave, any physio, any osteochiros, anyone who's in the healthcare space, um, from that point of view, sports friends massage. I always tell him, like, go see the guy. Like, he's, he's unreal. Mm. He's, he's a great guy. And good he's just man. Good physio. Yeah, basically. oh, he's, he's, he's the best, best the physio. Best, I right? think he's the best. And no, that's me probably being, you know, yeah. me, me saying that. But, but I think he's the best. I think Shana works there as well as the best. And I love my time there. So how that came about is, like I said, when my dad was ill, um, what people didn't understand is I had a lot of expertise in marketing in the background, but I never really shouted about it, mm -hmm. and sales, and building businesses. But Dave at the time were looking for a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, well, no one's personal assistant. Mm -hmm. But I thought, I'm up north. I'll go, and if I get the job, I'll do it for three months. I looked at his business, and I thought, there's some of that I could probably bring and help. And there's probably a lot I could also learn mm -hmm. from what his business is, because it were all online. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of wanted to get in that online space, because that would get him really big from then. So I went and did a lot of interviews with Dave, um, got the job. And then he was great. He just said to me, look, there's the range. You run with it and do what needs to be done. And we grew that company together and the team from, I think, like three staff members to 16 plus more, um, turned it into a big, big business, took on many therapists, grew it to where it needs to be. But Dave gave me the opportunity where he was spending, investing in himself and in the business with learning from different mentors in marketing, sales, etc. And he was so good with me where he says, do you want to learn this stuff with me? Many people said no because they couldn't be asked on the weekend mm. spending that time. And I had my little boy, Brock, at the time. And I was like a sponge. I said to Dave, whatever you're learning, Fucking give it, me. Give yeah, it yeah. Give whoever it, yeah. you're learning from mm -hmm. I'll do it with you mm -hmm. and he was great with that he gave me it I fucking took it I ran with it um, and three months turned into three and a half years working with him wow. great times loved it um, but there were a time when I, I thought it's time for me to step out now. to do my own thing yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. how that came about was my little boy was born obviously Brock we were ready to have another an, another little one little girl and I thought I've done what I feel like I've done here now mm, um, I've I've, yeah I've enjoyed yeah. it I've loved it and they're in a good position where that company is only going to carry on to grow. But I saw a gap in the market because they were working in the healthcare industry and physios, osteos, chiros. Dave's great and the team are great at getting great results for physios in looking at the body and getting better results for patients. But I saw that they were struggling with business from a marketing, a sales, operations, streamlining mm -hmm. point of view. And I thought, I can fill that gap. It's the same with a hairdresser, man. You could be the best hairdresser in the world, but if no one knows about you and you're marketing shit, 
you're not going to get anywhere. There's a lot of decent physios, isn't there? But oh, if, exactly if they just master that side of yeah, things. Yeah, it's like this is the problem. Is like everyone's have all these fucking certificates on the wall mm -hmm. about I've gone to uni, mm -hmm. I've got this degree, I've got this going. It means fuck all. Mm. The people who you're trying to serve, your clients, your customers, do not care mm -hmm. about what is on your wall. Mm -hmm. They care about what is it you're offering. Mm -hmm. Can it solve a bigger problem? And if it can, how much is it? It's mm. really simple. But the problem is in business is I always have a free a free step phase. Any business can grow based on just position, offer, sell. Mm -hmm. So positioning is like what you said. Positioning is how can I get as many people knowing about my business as possible? Where are they all hanging out? Where can I get eyeballs? Where can I get traction? That for me could be paid ads, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, etc. Figure out your positioning. Understand where people hang out, who it is you're trying to serve. Once you've got that right, then talk about your offer. If I give you this mic and I say, right, there's a stage of a thousand people who want what you fucking offer. What is your offer? You've now got to be able to say, shit, there I go. Here's my message. Here's what I can do to help you solve your biggest problem. Here's what we can do to make it resistible. So you're saying, yes, compared to all your other competition, I want what you offer. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's that last piece then, is if you get your positioning right, you get your offer right, you've then got to deliver on your promise and sell it. Mm -hmm. That's where the struggle is. They don't know what the positioning is. Mm -hmm. They don't know where to market the sales. People say, oh, I've done marketing. But what have you done on Facebook? I boosted a post. You might as well fucking throw money in the fire. Mm -hmm. That boosting a post is the worst thing you could do. The worst thing. There's really? other intricacies you need to focus on. We can mm -hmm. get into that. Mm -hmm. Offer, they don't even know what they offer. They'll say, hey, I help someone with back pain. Come and see me. It's not good <laughs> enough, right? Yeah. So many other people are saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. But then the sales thing is hard because then they feel like if they get those two things right, if they can't sell them that promise, then again, you're not going to drive around your business. And that's something that we're all needing to do. We need to drive around the business. We need to focus more on the customer rather than the sale. Because everyone focuses on the customer just to get the sale. Yeah. Flip it around. Focus on getting the sale to get the customer. Then focus on the fucking customer to increase the lifetime value, i.e. how much money they keep spending with you. Because if they keep spending more money with you, it's more revenue. What's that going to do? You create super fans. going to tell every other fucking person about you. Mm -hmm. Where the mouth will increase. So now you've got your positioning right from a paid ads point of view. You've now got super fans always talking about you. It's only going to grow, grow, grow. That means revenue comes in. What does revenue do? It gives you opportunity to grow. Spend in different areas, whether it's another team member come on board, whether it's marketing, sales, operations, and that's how you grow your business from five, six, seven figures and beyond. Is there like a, a prime example? Like let's say... Uh a common business like a barber shop, a hair salon, a beauty clinic, whatever, is there a common mistake you see all the time that you can kind of help people with? Yeah, you know it's, I mean? yeah it's every, every business is the same. It doesn't matter if it's a barber, a hair salon, it doesn't matter if it's a gym. You've got to have an example because no training. doubt someone watching is probably like, I've got a salon and shit, I boost posts. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. I'm sure you see, see something you think that's horrendous. Yeah, yeah, Don't hairdresser, counsellors, etc. So what they do is like, you know, for a hairdresser, for example, they'll, they'll put on, you know, before and afters or someone's yeah. haircut, etc. I'm best at hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they'll say, I'm great doing hair mm -hmm. i can do this you know fancy haircut for you which is going to make you look fabulous look mm -hmm. great right mm -hmm. and then they boost that they might put that as a post and facebook will say to them oh this post doing really well it's got engagements but money on to boost it they'll boost it but basically what that does it just shows everyone anyone who might not even be interested in your business yeah, so you spend money, money. yes yeah, so it's yeah. wasted money so that's yeah. where businesses are going wrong is they're wasting money in the areas that they need the most i.e marketing mm -hmm. so you've got to get it right from when you work in a, on a market perspective is you can literally pinpoint any business can pinpoint your ideal customer right now, whether they're male, female, what age, what gender, what interest they're into. And Facebook is very clever. It will show your ad to the people specifically when they're on their phone at a certain date and time. So if you know how to run ads and you know how to spend your money in the right areas, your best return on investment is looking into actually going into your ad account, running your actual ad account from your ad sets, your campaigns, your ads itself, rather than boosting your posts and just saying, hey, I'm a great hairdresser. You could literally find women who are looking to get their hair done right now mm -hmm. for certain occasions, weddings, birthdays, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. looking fabulous, feeling great, feeling amazing, pinpoint those, give them an offer they can't refuse, maybe the first one to come in, oh, they get, nice, yeah, or they get a blow cut, whatever they're after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got that customer, it's then like I said, is your marketing's done its job, you've now got the retention, you've now got them in, they've now spent money with you. Yeah, you've got to make now sure you question, look after them, yeah, give them yeah. a coffee, make them, yeah. Yeah, you've now got to question, how can I get them to keep returning and spend more money? Mm -hmm. So this is the problem with businesses, like I said, is that they don't get the marketing right, they think that they're just going to sit there and people are just going to walk through the business from word of mouth. Oh, my, my business grows in word of mouth, yeah, but it's not consistent. Mm. Yet you want to grow on scale. Every now and again, yeah, yeah. You can't fucking rely on it. Mm. I mean, you know, we're working together now. It's like I said to you earlier, you know, with us running your campaign two weeks ago, 147 leads come through the door, which is fantastic, amazing. But now, like I said, the team now need to consider 
what are these 147 people saying that we know we can help them with in the gym overcome their biggest problems with it's weight loss looking good fantastic to now get them in make them feel good like they do at your space mm -hmm. get the blood pumping feeling amazing and then retain them and keep wowing them and that's just going to increase like i said the, the revenue business is going to give you fair opportunity to grow yeah yeah so demand the market is your baby post physio is that right mm. so after the physio you set that company up and then you basically in a nutshell anyone who needs business help marketing help yeah basically growth that's yeah, where it's just in, yeah, yeah we, we look after all areas so we look after marketing sales operations we even help to lead the team put in the right systems processes kpi templates help you to hire help you to do all your ads in regards to putting them out uh, from a market perspective but also your adverts on indeed to find the right team member everything from a business the whole operations front end back end we look after you're gonna get me a sales manager i'll get if you need yeah, them we'll get one we're fucking, out of the on. we're fucking yeah. good if you get turned up by me yeah. um but like i said in, in all seriousness demand the market is more so of a healthcare professionals i.e yourself mm -hmm. pts gym owners Online coaches in, in the healthcare space, you know, we work with counsellors, psychotherapists, physios, osteos, chiros. So if you're an online coach and you need a bigger business, exactly, you, and that's that's the perfect market right now. And even even physios who have bricks and mortar clinics, mm -hmm. I've now got them doing stuff online as well. So we build them a members area. There's lots of things I can do which can give them a monthly recurring revenue retainer where they can help them with back pain, give them certain exercises, mm -hmm. they pay for that. So they're seeing people face to face. But then if they have a bad month for the business, they haven't really, because they've got this as a second avenue, Get online you. coaching, the which kids. is automated and everything, mm -hmm. and that's bringing an additional two, three, four, five k a month, that a year's 50k extra than you wouldn't have had. So, you know, there's, there's so many opportunities where people are missing out on this, where they just, like I said, they just need to get it right and speak to the right people, because... There's so many people, you know yourself in, in competition in these spaces, there's so many bullshitters out there, mm -hmm. you know, where they'll say we can do X, Y, and Z, but it's just to fill their own pockets. The plan mm -hmm. is to fill their own pockets, mm -hmm. get loads of clients on board, then fucking sell the business. Mm -hmm. Whereas I come from a place of passion and reputation where it's important to make him a reputation and say to individuals, tell them how it is, and say, look, this is where you're going wrong, this is what you need to do, and this is how we can make it happen for you. And not only just do it for you, but get you in a space to understand how it's being done, why it's being done. So if I ever drop dead tomorrow, your business is still healthy and you understand how you can implement it yourself also to be able to grow and scale. Get but me. you've just got to keep your fucking finger in it all the time and keep your eye in regards to what's going on when it comes to digital space. Because if you are not in the digital space right now and doing it correctly, you are gone. You are finished. Mm. I promise you you are. You're left behind. No one cares. And you've got to do it now. You've got to be in the digital space. That's where eyeballs are. Everyone's on this, mm -hmm. scrolling. And he's been in front of them. Get your message right, sell it, return. So what you're saying, obviously in my industry, what you're saying is if you're a decent one-to-one -one PT and all you do is get clients off the floor, you're, you're obsolete. You need to be on Instagram. You need a big social presence to get more and more clients. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Because back in the yeah. day, that used to be the only way. You'd literally floor walk, you'd get your clients, and then it would be word of mouth. But yeah. what you're saying is you're going to literally run out of clients eventually if you don't. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, but it's yeah. like, what's your purpose? What's your why? What's mm. your message? Mm -hmm. Why are you holding it back? Just being on the gym floor. Mm. You know, this is your gym floor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is a gym floor? It's just, oh, there's people there who want to train and want to work out. Perfect. Mm -hmm. There's also people sat at home in their beds, fucking doing fuck all, mm -hmm. who need a little bit of motivation, accountability, who also want to get up and work out. Mm. So wherever you can be seen, is what I always say to everyone, be fucking seen. Mm -hmm. That is it. Mm. Where can you be seen? Whether it's face face on the gym floor, whether it's online, it doesn't matter. But you've got to understand that you've got to build a brand. You are a brand. Mm. Like I say to my physios working the business, you are not the business, right? You are a brand within the business. Like you are, look at yourself as a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm. You know, and when you understand who you are and what you can offer, then it's about putting yourself in all these different spaces, having you, like you said, whether it's face to face on the gym floor, whether it's online, whether you're giving value, whether you're giving offers. Whatever it is you are doing, you just need to be fucking seen. You need to be seen. You need to do it. Just do it your own way. The hardest thing is that people overthink it. You've probably seen people before fucking cringe at some people online. Um, and they're trying so hard. I've done it before where I pretend I'm someone who I'm not. Mm -hmm. You just need to be yourself, man. Just mm. fucking speak your truth. Sure. Yeah, speak I, think, your truth. I, I think far too many people give a shit. I think you speak on camera openly like I do because... I, I'm not sure. I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. This thing. I mean, yeah, Jesus, yeah. I've done the most cringeworthy TV shows on the planet. You've been in front of thousands of people. I've been up and down catwalks in underwear, gay photo shoots, all the rest of it, right? And everyone's going to die. Unless it's like your best mate. Like, who gives a shit? So yeah. I'm assuming you get quite a lot of negativity because you put yourself out there. Yeah. 
How do you deal with that? Because you give a shit, mate. Why is it? Why is it so, me? So if you have like a really personal comment left on a social media post yeah. or whatever, what is your instant reaction? Do you know if it's something really bad, like about your kids or something? Yeah. What? How do you kind of t- talk yourself down? Perfect. What's the issue with you? Yeah. So you d- literally go, you This person? person's yeah, yeah. clearly yeah, yeah. really let me help sad. You. Yeah. Let me help you. What's the issue? Get you. What's the issue? What has triggered you in that moment for you to want to say X, Y, and Z or attack mm-hmm. in that moment? Let me help you. Mm. What's triggered you? Mm-hmm. Because all I've done is speak my truth, but mm-hmm. you've gone out of your way and taken your time to be so bothered about what it is I'm saying. So mm-hmm. something's triggered you. Tell me what is it. I'm always a big believer. There's a book by Sunek, I think it is, um, called Always Wondering Why. Why this, why that, why this, why that, with every action. Because mm-hmm. then you always find the emotion. You actually find the real reason of why that action happened. Mm-hmm. So someone can't even negative comment. It's like, why? I used to do it too. Mm. I was that person years ago at a young age. I was jealous of every fucker who had money. Mm-hmm. People, like, I thought to myself, if I make lots of money, life be sorted. I made lots of money. Fucking life were even worse. Like, I couldn't do more fucking things. I'd be in more stress. Mm. It's a lonely place. Mm-hmm. You'll always be lonely. Get comfortable being fucking lonely. Accept it being lonely. It's the best place you can be. Mm-hmm. To get comfortable being lonely, your life will become so much fucking easier. And then what I mean by that is not only just relying on, oh, they said this, or she said this, or they said that. What is it you're telling yourself? Mm. What's your own truth? What's your own belief? Take that moment in that lonely space to understand of what that is. And I guarantee you, all these negative comments, all these people bitching, morning whining, is because of the fact that something is holding them back from actually not doing what it is that they really, truly want to do. They don't have the fucking bollocks. They don't have the fucking get up and go to want to actually make something of their life. That's their issue. It's not fucking mine. And like you said, you've absolutely hit the nail on the head. Because one day you are going to die. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. The reality is, if you look at, you know, Elon Musk, Whoever it may be, you look up to be successful. They all came out of the fucking mother's womb. Mm-hmm. Fact. Mm-hmm. They all went to school. They all their ass wiped. Mm-hmm. They all then went out in the real world and fucking did something about it. Not bitching, moaning, whining about other people. Because mm-hmm. have you noticed, all successful people never fucking pass a comment about people who bitch and moan and whine about people who they might say are not to, you know, a, a level of growth or success as them. Mm-hmm. They don't do it, do they? They don't have time. Yeah, they don't have time. Mm-hmm. They always look at other things and look at other individuals of, of wanting to be in right circles to grow. But it's the people that are jealous, bitter, right, remorseful for whatever reason that are passing those comments. But think about your reasons behind it. Like, what's it really doing for you? What's your outcome? Mm. You're not fucking getting up from the back of that. Mm. So, like I said, for me, you just got to speak your truth. What's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to die one day. None of this really fucking matters. hundred years, two years go by. Mm-hmm. No one knows who I am. Mm-hmm. You look down at yourself and think, why am I so bored? Why do I have anxiety, stress, frustration? Mm. Why do I not just get out of my comfort zone and mm-hmm. make it happen? Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. People don't like to sit in the fucking fire long enough. Mm. They'll sit in the fire, and as the flames get close, it's hot. Nah, it's too hot for me. Mm. I'll fucking sit there, mate. They pretend like they want to, yeah, don't they? I will Jesus. sit there, yeah. and I will fucking stay there longer mm-hmm. than anyone. I guarantee you now. And I will feel that fucking fire, mm-hmm. and I'll feel it where I don't even feel it no more, because mm. I'm happy to be comfortable in the uncomfortable situations. I was thinking about this morning, because I was, I was speaking to a friend, and literally, it, how you see stress is, is so important, I think, because... If you see it as bad, like I say yesterday, I I literally woke up and I thought, you know what, this is the day my heart's going to go bang. And I was thinking about it all the wrong way. And I don't usually think like that. I'm not really that negative. But I was slightly like doom and gloom about it. And I was like, fuck, this is the day. My heart's going to go bang here. I'm so stressed. And he went, you should really be seeing it as a positive here because all you're doing is creating like a strong body, ar- body armour around you and you're just getting better and better at taking even more stress and being more successful. And I'm like, yeah, I just needed that reminder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so you're absolutely right. Staying in the fire. And accept it, mate. Mm. Accept it. Like, mm. do you think I'm sitting here now saying I'm perfect and I have mm. no stress and I have anxiety at times? Mm. Of course I fucking do. Mm-hmm. I've got two kids, for God's sake. Yeah. I've got a one-year-old yeah. girl Four-year-old boy, mm-hmm. a missus who's nagging me to get engaged to her, mm-hmm. right, yeah. 24-7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the bills to be paid for the house, the fucking cars, the mortgage, the fancy flash holidays we now have, which mm-hmm. we never used to have, growing the businesses. So a lot of stuff comes with that, stress, anxiety, frustration, desperation. Even at times, like I do, when I go for my 5K runs to clear my head, is I do think to myself, I have imposter syndrome. How the fuck have I made this happen? Mm. Shit, can I really do this? Can I really do that? But you know what I've done is I've just accepted it. That's just, I'm human, mate. Mm. I'm human. I accept it. Accept it's 365 that. days in a year. The reality is it's only going to happen four or five, six times, maybe even 10 times, maybe only a month in total. Mm-hmm. It's what I do with the remaining of those days to keep my head focused, get up and do the work that people are wanting to do that they don't feel comfortable with doing. And that's where the actual goal is. You know, so it's getting up. It's just having that fucking drive to make it happen, be there, get comfortable being uncomfortable and just 
accept when you do have those moments. It's how I'm feeling today, but it's not going to be how I am tomorrow. You make that decision, no one else. Makes sense. So, have you got any advice for your younger self if you were re you were redoing it all again? Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Good question, mate. So if I could, what, if I could speak to my younger self now, yeah, and tell you know, myself uh, what uh, eighteen be. or something, stop being a bum and. <laughs> yeah, I think that's easy. It's easy <laughs> to say that, isn't it? I think what I would say is, is keep on being you, mate. I just, I'd, I'd look at myself and say, don't lose who you are, because mm -hmm. I lost myself for a long time. Mm. Like since being born, the people say, how do you get your confidence from? I've always been confident. Mm -hmm. I've always just. I don't know where it came from. It's hard for me to, to, to it's hard to train confidence or teach one in it. And anyone who knows me sees me. I'm passionate. I do swear a lot. Not on, on purpose, like it's because it comes from a place of confidence, passion, know how. And I just said that 18 year old who lost his self because it were 18, I'd say, in that space. I'm just saying you, you, you're losing who you are and you're listening to other people outside of you to try and condition you of who you should be mm -hmm. rather than actually speak your truth and who you actually are. And so I just give him a shake and just say, Look, carry, on doing, yeah, carry on doing exactly what you're doing. Mm. Fucking stay true to who you are. Keep getting up at those stupid hours in the morning, putting in the action, putting in the work doing the uncomfortable things that people don't want to do and look at where it'll lead. And it's here now, like, you know, turning 35 this year, two beautiful kids, the biggest house that we ever wanted, you know, the place bro, that we're looking to buy now and we've got the car and, you know, work with people like yourself and our clients and we've just got this beautiful network around us and we're just living fucking life, not working for the man that's fucking trying to decide what outcome I've got going, do you know what I mean? And it's just because, again, just being true to myself, step out from your comfort zone, get comfortable being in the uncomfortable, take action, and just do the fucking work that's necessary. And your life will change for the better. But put yourself in the right circles. You need a mentor. Mm -hmm. You need a mentor. Every decent business person has a mentor, really. Everybody thinks mm -hmm. can do it on their own, mate. Mm -hmm. I did. My ego got too big. I can do this on my own. I'll learn this. I'll do this to do this. You can't. Mm -hmm. If you need a videographer, you get a fucking videographer. Do Delegate shit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you need something, if you can't do marketing, get someone to do marketing. If you can't do sales, get someone to teach you sales. I think a lot All of these things. guys specifically are bad for this. They... They see it as weakness asking for help, and that's the worst thing ever. Yeah, but then you ask them the question. Yeah, and then you ask them the question. Yeah. You see it as a weakness, but what's changed? Mm. What else are you going to do differently that you've already done before that's, that's going to make the biggest difference to get to where you want to be? Nothing. Apart from earn more money when you ask for help. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. And people don't. And the problem is, is that people spend too much time trying to learn something mm -hmm. that they could delegate, spend money on, invest yeah. themselves, and make more money back and from they someone who's next doing it. it anyway. Like me, if I if I pulled a YouTube up and started learning Facebook ads. I could probably do it, but I tell you what, my time would be better spent elsewhere. 100%. You know and, I mean? and that, that's where I went wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was pulling up YouTube, mm -hmm. learning all these things mm -hmm. on the hours of sun. All right, got me to where I am today, but I wasted all that time. Mm -hmm. And it's now with a business where I've grown it to where it needs to be. And don't get me wrong, you'll know this yourself. When you start any business at a young age, you've got to buy in your fucking gum shield and do the fucking work. You've got to do that. Maybe build a website, landing page, whatever. But when you get yourself in a position where you've got investment or you've got some money that you can get and you can invest in the people who know how. That's it. Fucking do pass it. The job, pass Get the a job. mentor. You yeah. want to bounce ideas. You want shoulder to shoulder people to mm -hmm. let off steam. Mm -hmm. Talk things through rather than just having your own red I'm thinking, I wonder if this will work. This will work. This will work. Track the right metrics. Track the right actions in your business with people who have actually been there and done it. Learn from them. I guarantee your business has got through the roof overnight. Guarantee you. Mega. I enjoyed that, mate. Thank you very much for your Good time, mate. boss. Appreciate it. Thank you.